i was talking about creation of puzzles so this i hope you it is clear that you can make a puzzle like this give it to the students and they will enjoy it. create notice boards okay you should have a notice board uh, general things we always see for maths you should have a notice board uh, give duty to the students if they find anything interesting about maths put it on uh, put it on the board uh, lots of information is very important to generate interest is important that a notice board is there so every time the child is coming to the school they need to see that notice board and see what is there in the notice board okay make it very creative okay somebody has made some good project uh, you put it up on the notice board somebody has uh, uh, written something or there is an article that the child has brought you need to show that to the students so notice boards is a very important uh, aspect of uh, bringing about life in the classroom uh, integrate other subjects now uh, there is a lot of emphasis that we should not go especially up to class 8 those who are teaching 1 to 8 we need to integrate with other subjects at least one or two projects to promote because they should not uh, this is maths this is saying that separation they say no hard separation of subject should be avoided in the new nep so that's what we need to integrate as maths science so that's why i gave you the example of the seesaw and swings and all that because there is a lot of science involved there so try to involve all that so the teachers will uh, be able to connect uh, to the students because it's related to all the subjects otherwise if you are isolated from other subjects uh, it's it is not going to be very meaningful so experience this is all different topics all together i am sure you done a lot of this so i am not talking much about these cooperative learning you must have been doing this you know there is one child who does exceptionally well the other child is not so good in maths so there has to be some make learning groups so learning groups is okay you group uh, this uh, a this role number 1 to 5 you are one group this is the team leader and you uh, create a learning experience for them if there is somebody weak uh the they will automatically be taken care of the other group members so cooperative learning is important no man is an island we cannot survive alone we need help as teachers also we are not all equal no some are very good teachers some are average teachers some are not so good teachers but we require but we need to help out each other okay the good teacher should not say that okay i am not going to share any information with anyone at the same time the person who is not the uh, average and wants to improve they should not hesitate from taking help from a person who is better than you you need to have a mentor who is better than you then only you can improve otherwise what will happen if you have ego issues and say that i am the best learning can never happen right so let's forget all our egos and let's always try to learn think out of the box now uh, uh, origami uh, is a beautiful example of how stories can be told now you are talking about a, a elementary child you start with the story you bring a small frog okay that you see the picture there made out of paper uh, how I, how is it made by origami you know so origami techniques are there and you see the all the mathematical shape they are made up of triangles and other uh, this thing uh, other mathematical shapes so you say okay say this is the frog this is coming now do you know how to make this we are making this from this space this uh, pieces of paper or this is how we fold it think out of the box make a make a story out of it and then what will happen they will uh, try to make it they will understand the concept better tangrams i already you already know uh, giving different shapes you can make animals birds human beings anything out of tangrams so i am not uh, going deep into that because you are already aware of that celebrate special days this is very important that you celebrate a maths day a pi day okay uh, many uh, 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 one of the schools had invited me to celebrate their national maths day i think some teachers of that school are already here i think so you know so they celebrated a ramanujan uh, uh, you know birthday they had celebrated that so it gives you something okay that we are doing something for maths a pi day can be done on 14th march okay it's called a you know why it's called a pi day because 3.14 that is the value of pi approximate value so 14 march is celebrated so children get oh they they, they may not even know that uh, uh, 14 march is called pi day and you celebrate you put some competitions there and so on give some interesting information okay 10 to the power 100 is called google okay google is a huge number so 10 to the power 100 is called so information like this i'm just going fast because these are all information which you can what is it in english we say no i am coming in a jiffy what is the meaning of a jiffy jiffy is actually mathematically 100th of a second okay 100 i am coming in a jiffy means you are going you are coming out you are coming very fast so i'll be back in a jiffy you know you say that normally in english language those were english teachers they will know better or it's a common phrase that we use 
these are interesting facts. Do you know that the letter A comes only once in the numbers from 1 to 1000? A we don't use at all in 1 to 1000 at all. So where does it come? It doesn't come in 1, 2, 3, 4. Isn't it surprising? A, which is a vowel, which is a common alphabet, doesn't come in 1, 2, 999. It's coming only in 1000. A is coming only in 1000, not in any other. So the symbol for division, which we call, is called an obelisk. So these are all interesting information which we can give. Okay? Roman numerals we can uh, uh, represent every number except for the number 0. That means the Romans did not have the concept of 0. Uh, it is believed that Indians have given that, uh, uh, that concept. So these are interesting information. Uh, golden ratio in nature. In nature, you will see a lot and lot of concepts where, about the golden ratio, which proves that God is the greatest mathematician. So I'm just showing you some slides to explain that. You can show this, that, you know, they will say, sir, where is maths used? Everywhere in nature, we will have this mathematical uh, combination or the golden ratio, right? So golden ratio is uh, in um, Greek alphabet represented by phi, uh, P-H-I. And uh, you can talk about mathematicians like Leonardo Fibonacci was an Italian mathematician. Look at the series there, one, one, two, three. What is special about this series? When you add one and one, you are getting two. Then one plus two is giving three. Two plus three is five. Uh, three plus five is eight. It goes on Fibonacci series. And in nature, golden ratio, you will get lots and lots of examples. In graphic designing, in art, geometry, uh, even uh, most beautiful structures on the uh, uh, earth like Taj Mahal is built on the golden ratio. Surprising. Now look at our body parts. Everything is based on the golden ratio. If you look at your palm size to uh, the uh, this distance from your palm to that where you fold, then that is the ratio 1 is to 1.6. That means this part is 1.6 times the size of your palm. Similarly, the Mona Lisa, one of the greatest uh, paintings by Leonardo da Vinci is considered one of the best paintings is based on the golden ratio. Uh, that means the breadth of the face is, uh, when you compare to the length of the face, is in the ratio 1 is to 1.6. The Taj Mahal is based on the golden ratio. See the beauty of the golden ratio. Everywhere in nature, the beauty is in the uh, golden ratio. So if you look at the length of the, uh, the arches or the doors or the windows, that will be 1.6 times the breadth. And that's the concept of beauty. And this is everywhere in nature. So tell them all this, they will get interested. The egg which is naturally found is golden ratio. So compare, tell them, see the width and the length and compare that, that will come uh, 1 is to 1.6 approximately. Similarly, flowers, cocoons, you know, the silkworm, everything that you see is based on the golden ratio. You, uh, everyone knows the symbol, right? What is this? The symbol is? Apple. Apple. Uh, apple uh, company. Is, ah, yes, apple the apple company. company because there's a bite taken. In fact, this bite is designed, this, this has been designed, uh, designed on the golden ratio. Now, why couldn't they make a full uh, apple? And why did they uh, design like this? Any Anyone knows that? Why did they have, why couldn't they, make, it's an apple company, why couldn't they take a full apple? They could have taken a full apple and shown, but what is the significance of this picture? Many of you use iPhones and iPads and Hi. you've seen this. Yes, anybody? The bite. Ah, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's the bite. Okay, so you've taken a, you've taken a bite. So B Y T E is also a technical a computer language, you no know, one bite. So the, the bite, they have integrated that. And the whole picture is based on the golden ratio. Handsome men of Hollywood, uh, George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Bradley Cooper, if you see all, uh, they're all based on the golden ratio. That's why they're so handsome and attractive. Okay, just like the Mona Lisa painting. So the human body itself, when it is, uh, the closest you are to the golden ratio, they say the more handsome or beautiful you are, right? So uh, if you compare, there are, uh, I think, more than hundreds of golden ratio in your body part. So these are some of the things that is there. You can do a Google search, you will find all this. So people can make projects on this and people are using this in real life, okay? So that I will be showing you shortly. So distant length of the lips to the width of the nose, 1.6. Human face length to the width is 1.6. Human biceps to hand is 1.6. Shoulder to knee and knee to toe is one So innumerable, I've just given you a random stuff here. And as Srinivas Ramanujan said, an equation means nothing to me unless it expresses a thought of God. So everything that you find in nature is actually in the golden ratio. So it's a beautiful topic about real life application in maths. Food is something which children love, no? Food, majority at least, there are very few people who ate. So a lot of questions can be developed on food. 
you can develop questions on pizza and cakes for example okay i'm showing you one example this is something very interesting that i found out if you if you notice a pizza is a circle or we can say it's a cylindrical if you consider the height it comes in square boxes and it is divided into triangles so you see the mathematical shapes involved that it's a it's a circle if you look at 3 uh, 2d it's a circle and what is happening it comes in a square box and then what happens you are dividing into triangles or if you look at it in three dimensionally uh, it's a, it's a cylinder actually because it's got a small height and then what are you doing it comes in a uh, cubical box it's not a square it's a cube if you look at three dimension and what are you doing you are dividing into sectors and if you understand pizza uh, let's imagine that the pizza has got a thickness of a and the radius is z what is the formula of a circle it uh, it is pi r square and what is the height h so actually if you find the volume of the cylinder what is it pi r square h so pi into radius is z so what will happen z into z and what is the height they have taken a so pizza so something which will help them to remember okay the this is just a it's just to make it interesting okay it's not that anything very um, logical behind it but at the same time it's a very interesting that a pizza if suppose we are taking a pizza assuming that the radius is z and the height is a then the formula pi r square h when you use you are going to get the volume as pizza right so uh, uh, we can uh, bring in all these concept of food because children love uh, all these uh, topics of food uh similarly we can take up uh, uh, topics like uh, i have got one on cakes okay networks and pattern this uh, i'll be showing you some real life examples okay fractals now this is i am not going to go in detail i want to show you some uh, things which um, uh, people are actually doing in life fractals are repetitive patterns now why are repetitive patterns important because that is the essence of design now if uh, if you are creating a building or anything you need symmetry in that building for architects this is a very uh, a topic which is very close to that we're repeating a process over uh, same so if you are wearing a sari and what is happen your pattern is all different here and there it will not look good but if your border is same okay there is some circle triangle pattern then what happens is that it looks beautiful right so creating patterns uh, fractals so this is the student i was talking about he is a genius okay his name is ankan mitra you can google for him and look at the things that he is doing with progressions and series i mean this is his uh, his creation okay he is a genius as i told you he is one of the most renowned origami architects in the world he started with an architect but then he got interested in origami and in fact he had done a session with me uh, uh, seven months back some of you may have attended that session uh, of that also uh, when ankan was with me and uh, so he as a student he was intrigued by all these and then look at the creation you will be amazed by what the things that he does uh, the the creations world famous he goes to china paris uh, god knows where all europe us and this is the products that he has created and he says sir everything is based on uh, uh, mathematics Uh, it's all based on symmetry now if suppose he is making all this and there is a change in the patterns it will not be beautiful right so you see there is a symmetry in this look at the amazing stuff he is doing this is just i am sharing a sample okay you can google about him you will find uh, unbelievable products that he has made i mean how that he is actually doing with paper he is doing with steel he is doing creating this for buildings now uh, which are to produce designs right so see the amazing stuff i mean it's unbelievable that people can actually do this all through folding activities so uh, in fact uh, he had conducted a origami workshop some time back and uh, you know thousands of tickets were sold uh, with, as soon as he launched this so he is as i told you is world famous so uh, he, he, this is how you know uh, that creation of interest and patterns so somebody must uh, may be asking you in class Uh, what do we do with all these patterns see this is the examples in front of you okay this is another example okay just give me a minute lagade lagade bakke lagade kya kar raha hai charger hi to lagana hai pack pe dal ke uh, somebody's mic is on can we mute that please okay <clears throat> yeah so as i told you uh, now see somebody has created music uh, uh, and connected it to patterns so i'm just playing this uh, for you 
so this is a pattern a visual pattern again based on symmetry and patterns yeah so you see uh, uh, even things like music can be done uh, uh, we can create patterns so the children have to understand the importance of pattern fractals and all that create opportunities for friendly competitions it's important that there is competition friendly competition not for winning or losing friendly competition and what is going to happen okay you do this question this team uh, does this this row does this question or which let's see which row wins okay or you set timers for personally okay you give a question and uh, you ask the students to note down the time and uh, okay first question you you did it in 3 minutes second question you did in 5 minutes tell them to total it up so what are they doing they are not only solving the question they are also adding it up so it could be according to the level of the children the questions can be easy level uh, tough or whatever it is right so make uh, competitions like this and they always like to compete with themselves or with others but again uh, it's not for winning or losing it's a it's a it's something to create interest okay <clears throat> uh, introduce stem projects that's what what does stem stands for science technology engineering and math so as i told you when you are having a, a a word problem or something like that then what is going to happen uh, integrate other things okay make it uh, cross curricular not only math so when you are giving a project stem project tell them to identify a problem of the class okay so uh, what is the problem of the class now let's say i am just giving you an example now uh, during covid times you just make a situation a government is not allowing all the 40 kids to come to this class so you need to create a seating arrangement such that each student is separated by a minimum distance of 3 feet now ask the students to plan out how will the students sit so they will make their plan seating plan okay student 1 will sit here and then 3 feet so if you give the dimensions of the class okay Uh, sir we can do it this way three people are sitting on this uh, row then another three somebody will say we can do it around the corners somebody will say that you know the different different things uh, ideas will come up so this is one practical way of introducing this you are giving a real life problem and they are making a seating arrangement so i'm just giving an example you can always uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, add or subtract things on your own look at the cake anything which is circular have you ever wondered why it is always cut from the center why not from the sides anything which is circular whether it's a pizza or a cake okay uh, why so they are bringing a cake on your birthday or something or uh, or you are taking a cake one day and tell them that uh, in your birthday party why do you cut it like this there is a reason or they just it's it, it's a tradition uh, anybody knows uh, why is, why are circular objects cut only from the center and not you know just like we cut uh, rectangular or uh, square objects to get the equal parts ah yes ma'am to get equal parts otherwise there is no way of getting so example for example if i cut the uh, pizza uh, you know horizontally or vertically who will eat all the sides i want to get the center part right so uh, they will say okay you you will cut it like this so everyone has equal portions to make it homogeneous and you can introduce concept of fractions and you know parts all this 1/4 what is 1/3 and all that with food so when when you bring in food uh, cycle objects like that which they are pizza which something which they are using and eating and all you know there there is an excitement hop scotch match this is also very good if uh, for smaller kids that is uh, you must have seen uh, you know this that you need to uh, hop scotch you know that game no that uh, so they will skip on one number so you have to make a grid they will skip on one number let's say they will skip on number 5 and then the next uh, they have to skip on an operation so 5 they will uh, jump on into then they will uh, jump on another number 3 5 into 3 then they will jump on equal to and then whatever is the answer they have to jump on that number 
right? So that's hopscotch match. Then you have to introduce different different symbols. So you have to put a grid there. So the child has to really think of jumping on one number, then the operation, then the second number, then the equal to, and then uh, the final answer. So that is called hopscotch match. It works well with again elementary students. If it's a double digit number, they will jump together, where the right leg and left leg together. So they, if they jump. One leg is on one, another leg is on five, so the number becomes fifteen. So fifteen, they jump into the next into, then they go to a single number or a double number. So depending on that, then equal to the answer. So that that's called a hopscotch grid. Probability and ratio can always be demonstrated in class. Okay, just like tossing a coin. When you toss a coin, what will come? Somebody will say head. Somebody will say tail. Okay, now you do one thing. You toss it ten times and you record your observation. You can. Uh, or you throw a dice see what is happening or how many boys are there how many girls are there okay find the ratio of boys and girls don't give a problem on the board tell them give them that example find the ratio of boys and girls in the find how many match periods do you have in a week how many english periods do you have the week okay now can you all find me the ratio of maths and english they will do it okay so they look into the time table there is something some activity is there not a, a, a question from the uh, school book so match period english period they are making that uh, notes and then they are comparing so they learn about ratios building blocks one of the best things that i have seen children doing is building blocks again elementary kids building blocks uh, what is going to happen they will build it's called the 1 meter dash so first of all there are two things one they should build it to 1 meter 1 meter is not easy because by the time it comes to 70 cm 80 cm it will collapse okay so first they have to estimate how much is 1 meter so they will uh, the you will have to say stop at 1 meter so if they are stopping at 70 that means he doesn't understand the concept of 1 meter and the moment it goes in height what happens it fall, crashes down so the, uh, the what is the thing most people in order to do it fast will make one block over the other but what is the technique in this building block is that your base has to be strong unless the base is strong you will not be able to make the building block okay so you are teaching them unknowingly the basic concept of engineering and architecture that your base is strong then your building can rise to a certain height otherwise you are putting one one block it will all collapse and secondly you are teaching about estimation what is 1 meter okay so they will know exactly more or less how many blocks is it required to stop so these are activities by which we can uh, so. then case studies now these case studies are very important these i have prepared for senior classes for uh, for especially for class 10 but i am just showing you that how you can prepare case studies for any class uh, any concept can be introduced through a case study okay so for example okay shadow formation now again i am i am talking about class 10 okay look at the shadow formed here this is a, a vertical uh, stick and the shadow formed is 42 feet now can you tell me uh, the shadow of that tree is this much can you find out the height of the tree so they will use similar triangles they will use trigonometry and then they can you can you can give questions okay so this is what i gave you a question so what did i show them i showed them a shadow and i told them okay by looking measuring the shadow you can actually find out the height of the tree and now you will say okay height of the tree you measured now with the shadow of the school building can you tell me what will be the height of the school building now it becomes really interesting for them because without actually taking a tape and they are measuring the height of the school building now you will tell them see this is how even height of mount everest can be measured with the help of trigonometry with the help of similar triangles so this is how we introduce case studies so i'm just going hurriedly because this may not be relevant to all classes but i'm giving you some examples this is pattern formation in every hand loom you will find pattern information uh, formation you could be a bed sheet it could be a sari it could be any fabric it could be anything that you find bring it to class and show if there is any pattern that show it and you ask five questions on that okay what do you observe what is this circle inside the triangle known as you make imagine it but bring that object bringing that object and then put five questions on that okay now sepensky triangle this is uh, we are doing about triangles now if you find some interesting concepts about triangles bring it now he was a, a polish mathematician a person from poland and then he uh, what is the concept just he is joining uh, the midpoints of the similar triangles repetitively and that is called a sepensky triangle so we give questions on that okay hello and welcome so, to my new video how to draw a you can just see triangle. it's a simple concept the sapinski triangle is a famous fractal a fractal is a shape that can repeat itself at any scale of magnification or reduction to draw this triangle i start by drawing an equilateral triangle 
a triangle where each side is of equal length. You could use a ruler for your straight lines, or you could just do it by eye. Next, I draw a dot at the halfway point of each side of this first triangle. I then join these three dots together to make a new upside down triangle in the centre. Plus, by doing this, I've also made three new triangles, one in each corner. Next, I find the three halfway points to the bottom right triangle and draw three dots and then join them to make a new set of triangles. I repeat this process again and again. I move on to repeat this process for every upright triangle that I create. Okay, so I can just play a video like that and then I can go to the question. Okay, now can you tell me how many triangles are there in this figure? How many congruent triangles are there? How many similar triangles are there? What will be the ratio? So what happens when you, that video, when you're showing, it takes the interest of that. So any, you will get plenty of videos. That video can be played and you can generate interest and then you can give five questions. So in every class, whatever is the concept that you're introducing, bring a video and play it first or take an activity and do that. And then you give the questions instead of just coming to the class. Okay, students, today I'm going to do this, take out your notebook and start doing this, you know? So that's how we do. So other, other, I'm just sharing you some, uh, uh, this is now a video on uh, how to find the area of a circle. gives you the area of a circle. But where does pi r squared come from? First, we'll draw a circle and fill in its area. Next, we will divide it into large equal parts and arrange them in a rectangular formation. As you can see, it barely resembles a rectangle. So next, we will divide the circle into small equal pieces and we will arrange them in the same manner. You can see that it appears more like a rectangle. So if we divide the circle into even more smaller pieces, you can see that every time the shape becomes more like a rectangle. So how small must we divide a circle? So like this, I can, I, I can show a video because instead of just telling area of circle is pi r square, how did we get it? So that video, when I show it, the children are able to understand that, okay, when I cut this circle into infinite parts, then this is what happens. The circumference is equal to the, uh, the length becomes half of the circumference and the radius becomes the breadth. So that is why length into breadth. You know, you can correlate all that. So uh, this is a, now everybody is, uh, uh, you know, uh, very interested about sports. Now, who is the sportsman who is coming first? Who is this? <laughs> yes, Usain Bolt. Okay, so children are already excited. Usain Bolt, Usain Bolt, the fastest runner in the world. Okay, so I'm, I want to give a question and I, I'm thinking of Usain Bolt. So see how I've added this as a case study. At 21 years of age, the youngest man in the final. Ben Matey, carrying the hopes of Cote d'Ivoire, and Johan Blake, Bolt's fellow Jamaican. It's been a moment that has been 120 years in the making at the modern Olympic Games. Is Usain Bolt about to rewrite the record books again? Gatlin got a good enough start. Bolt was a bit slow to begin. He's got some work to do. Gatlin's in front. Bolt stretching out now. He's coming after him. He's immortal now. You 
Okay, so I have created some interest, you know, because I know that, you know, you should feel the pulse. So what are these interested? Okay, if they're, they're interested in cricket or something like that. So I can bring in cricket clippings. I can add questions. So here I have made a question. Okay, four runners are starting this. this. I made a question on coordinate geometry. Now what is going to happen after five seconds? I have made a question like that. We've given five. So idea is what? I have created an interest. And based on that, I am solving my purpose of teaching them coordinate geometry. So I have made innumerable questions like this. This is about probability. Okay, I'm just uh, going fast. Now this is another example, like they see a lot of monuments outside. Okay, so this is the goal gumbas. So you tell about the goal gumbas. It's the tomb of King Muhammad Adil Shah. Now, if you look at the shape, the bottom portion is a cube. On top, we have a hemisphere. So then you give some introduction about that. Okay, then this is something which is real life. Okay, now this is the question before you. Now tell me, what is this? What is this? What is this? If I want to paint this, I want to plaster this, then what will be? I have made questions based on that. So first, it's a real life situation, connecting it to real life. How, if I want to paint, how much money will it take? Okay, that's something real. So they need to calculate. So I give them the dimensions uh, on arithmetic progressions. You can make innumerable as per your class. Okay, so this is, I've given a, a, a flower, a petals, you know, the arrangement of the flower, flower patterns. On the first row, there are these mini petals. Second is this, third is this. So it becomes a progression. Then you ask some questions based on that. Then this is questions based on linear equations. Okay, so a, a person goes to the market, buys this, this three books and five pens. Which graph is, do you think is correct? You know, so questions like this can be developed. So uh, that's what I said, that every uh, thing that you do has to, especially the introduction part, I would say, lay great emphasis on that. And then you need to take your classes with case studies. You need to bring in objects to your class. You need to involve the students That's and really make it very, very interesting. Uh -huh. So with this, I conclude okay. that uh, maths is definitely a gift to mankind. As maths teachers, I think uh, there are some teachers who say, uh, uh, when am I going to retire? You know, the, and uh, they accept the fact that, you know, maths is tough and boring. So let's change as maths teachers. Let's change that image that maths is not boring. Or it's actually the most interesting. So uh, when the new academic year starts or something, uh, our math classes should be the most interesting because that is actually the most practical subject uh, in, in life. So with this, I end. And thank you so much for your patience and uh, all the material that I had promised, the certificates and the other things I will be posting in the group. So kindly do not exit. And if there are any questions, I am ready to thank you. Uh, I am ready to answer that. So thank you so much. Uh, so thank you questions. for the wonderful session. It was you, really, really nice. And it is uh, going to help us to prepare for the next academic session. Thank you so much, ma'am. And also, uh, you said that you will be discussing something about GeoGebra, how it can be used. Ah, okay, okay. okay. Thank you. So yeah, uh, I'll be you. just sharing that. Thank you for reminding. So I will be telling you that, Sai, thank you for reminder. So let me... <laughs> Yeah, so I will be telling you the site. You can explore this site. Uh, if uh, yeah, one second. Right. So uh, those who are interested in GeoGebra, what you need to do is go to this site. Uh, the site is called geogebra.com, www.geogebra.com. So I'll just show you. Yeah, geogebra.org. Okay, this is the, you're able to see the page, I suppose, geogebra.org, that is the space. And here, you will get classroom resources, right? Here you will get these classes. You just click on the classroom resources and depending on your class, you will get many, many options, okay? So here we have six to eight, here we have elementary school, here we have middle and high school, okay? So lots of ready-made activities are there which you can demonstrate to the students. So let's, uh, I'm just taking a random one. Let's say I'm taking elementary school, okay? You could take any, but I'm just showing you one. So you can just take, so here we'll have lots of resources for class two, for class three, all that. So let's take something. Let's say we are taking something on measurement. Okay. 
Okay, so measurement, what is going to happen? You will get further. What is the measurement now that you're doing? Are you comparing small numbers, big numbers, what are? So you can click on something, comparing two whole numbers, suppose. So what is going to happen? You will get an activity like this. So children can all do, do this online. So here I'll put my first number, okay, 34. And I'm putting my next number, 45. So what is going to happen? Yeah. So which number is bigger? So they will get a chart. Now with this, the child is able to decide. Now this is for class one, right? Or class two, when you are introducing bigger and larger. So what is going to happen? Now he will see 34 is bigger or 45. Look at the number of grids. Okay, here there are only three lines. There are, there are four and count there one, two, three, four. So the child gets an, a, visual, uh, a, 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 a visual picture of what is the number. So which is bigger, what is lesser? So I'm just showing you an example. Uh, there are, as I told you, hundreds and thousands. You have to just explore this. Uh, this is the site. And this is just for elementary school. As I told you, this is for uh, all the others. So operations, um, this thing, numbers, you will get lots and lots of things. Okay, these are the options that you will get. Lots and lots of options. So you can just need to explore. So site I'm telling you is www.geogebra.org. And this is there for all classes up to class 10. Okay. So, uh, and these activities can be done by the student and also can be demonstrated by the teacher. Thank okay? you very so, much, sir. Yeah, thank that you. That would be really interesting. Yes, ma'am. So this is, a, the, this is a free version and this already, it has about more than 200, 300 activities per class. I have personally seen, so a lot of things, whatever class is there, 200 to 300 activities, basic operations, comparisons, geometry, perimeter area, all this is already there. Right, so you can explore this geogebra.org. Thank you for yes. your information. It was very informative and very uh, helpful for us. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much. Glad Thank that, you uh, so much. Uh, is there any kind of ways uh, so that we can uh, teach uh, theorems for a uh, higher uh, middle school? Ah, yes, ma'am. So if you're going for higher classes like Pythagoras theorem, uh, sum of angles of triangle is 180, all that uh, we can very easily do on this site. So you just need to click on the higher uh, this uh, class. Okay. You just so need to we go can, and uh, go to the. When we go through this, we can. Uh, yeah, yeah. This all the theorems. Also. Yeah, just like we do oh. the practical activity, cut and paste. Same way we can. Yeah. Uh, uh, we will be able to get this. Uh, so okay, you will sir, be able to prove so all the theorems. Okay, fine, sir. Thank you so much. Welcome, ma'am. So time is almost up. So thank you everybody for coming. Thank you, Minakshi ma'am, for coming. <laughs> thank you, thank <laughs> you very much, Matthew, sir. <laughs> the session was so interesting, sir. Thank you, yes, sir, the session was very good. Thank you so much. Thank so you. I really like everything. the idea when you want to the information uh, session. Teaching through sports, cricket and all. <laughs> so I yes, would yes, say thanks. years ago when my child, he was not having any interest in uh, uh, studying Hindi and all. So he was very fond of this cricket samrat. So I, I brought <laughs> cricket samrat for him. I used to give comprehension from that cricket samrat book. So that's why <laughs> yeah. he <laughs> yeah. I mean, learned a lot from that. Yes, yes, absolutely. So that is what where we have to do. Whatever is the child interest, according to that, give them problems. And then they will